Work with me. Working? Of course I'll just uh, pick out some tools and make sure all this stuff is in place before I start doing the things. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So definitely a lot, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Good. Good on that. What does the display look like? Um, on right. landscape. Interesting. Okay. The house was look? Uh, close enough. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it for sure. Could be worse. Um, but you can hear me okay? Um, I believe so. Um, give me a minute. Bear with us just one second here, guys. Yeah, go ahead, guys. Um, and you put some comments in the chat so I can make sure my device is working correctly. And of course, let us know that the audio is working. Because yeah. if I gotta tweak some things, I'd rather do it up front since there's a bit to unpack and explain since we're doing a totally different format here today. So just let me know. Meanwhile, I'll Meanwhile. just write doodly doodles and whatnot. Any seeing of the things? Uh, I know that'll be a little bit of lag anyways, but... Maybe? Uh, no, nothing yet. Okay. Well, there might not be any viewers. It's an odd time of the day, so... Well, there's there's a couple of people on All here. All right. Um, I'll just, uh... There we go. Yay! Somebody's... Comments work. <laughs> okay. Somebody say if the audio is okay? Yep. Dave said audio works. Fantastic. So I'm just going to jump right into it. And please feel free to ask any questions you can. I have my lovely assistant here. And so long as we can read the comments coming through, I'll try to answer things while I share this totally different format of another way to work. So this is a pen sketch that I posted probably a couple weeks ago. And we did a quicker live version of it a couple of few weeks ago at this point. And that was paper, you know, markers, airbrush on paper over top of this big pen. So, you'll notice uh, from the format here today that we are in Photoshop. Because I thought this would probably be the best way to kind of cross the bridge. And I get uh, a lot of questions about the digital format of finishing renderings. Because I think there's a lot of misinformation about it. So I'm going to try to explain some of the stuff while I do it. I'm going to do sort of a quick demo-y version. Because obviously we're starting from a pen sketch. Which isn't, which isn't particularly clean. That's okay. And you'll see over here, like, this is our pen sketch in there. I'm going to always have a, a background plate and lock those so that nothing happens to them while I'm working. I have them ordered a certain way because as you see as we get started, it'll have a certain look to it in order to use the layers appropriately to get the kind of style that we want. But I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to try to explain some of this format while I'm in it. And please, if you've got any questions, feel free. So just to kind of keep things simple, I'll start with some of these lowers and... Just kind of fill these guys in real, real quick. Actually, I think we need to have this guy on overlay or multiply. And All right, Cam's just saying, what's going on? What's up? So technically, this is actually the opposite way that I would normally start because I wouldn't start with these lowers. But the reality in something like this is like we're starting with a super bright white background just like we would with paper but this is actually brighter in a lot of ways because it's projected versus uh, paper white is kind of kind of has a different feel so because of the colors that i have in mind uh, what i want to do is start building contrast right off the bat and i don't typically do that when i'm working on paper because the materials need to be layered in such a way uh, to get the look correct without moving forwards and backwards too much. Because we're working digitally, we have all the room in the world to do pretty much whatever we want all the time, which is great. It kind of opens up the entire world all at once, which is really, really cool, which means there doesn't have to be a rhyme or reason, but I still have one because I'm a crazy person. No, you're not. And, uh, all right, so just blotted in those darks real quick. I just got a layer mask there. And what I'm going to do is cut out these areas really, really carefully. I did it as a mask versus erasing because uh, I can unerase and go back and forth if I need to. 
um, you know, somebody asks questions more about the use of masks versus layers versus the brush types or tools, that's really like Photoshop fundamentals, which is uh, more like basics, which I can cover if people are interested down the road. But for now, we just kind of want to make some really, really quick progress. And uh, you guys can see how quickly something like this can take shape. One of the big advantages of working in this format, especially when I travel or I'm doing uh, uh, jobs on the spot, is I only have to have my drawing tablet and a laptop with me. And uh, we can do everything really, really quickly, as opposed to traveling with tons of markers and airbrush paint and stuff like that. Dealing with security, having yeah. to confiscate your paints. Yeah, which I've had happen happens. so much. Um, and as expensive as the materials are, the real materials, it's just not worth the risk um, to lose anything in the process of traveling, especially right now. So this is basically an entire toolbox and then some. Like you, it, would be, uh, it would be very difficult to own all the tools that I'm going to use here. And while I do, in a lot of ways, own a little bit of everything that I use, um, traveling with everything is just not totally practical anymore. Not, it's, it's 2020 after all. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's not a bad idea to, uh, to live in the time period that we're currently in. All right, so I just did a really, really quick cutout of that stuff. We'll just go ahead and actually I'll clean that up just a teensy tiny little bit. Switch back over to white. Whoops. Go back to the mask. White. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay. All right. Apply that guy. And you'll see the way that layers are built in something like this is, can be done in reverse. Um, you can see, if, if you're looking over my layers panel, I try to keep things really, really simplistic. Um, at least in the early stages. Later, things can get very, very complicated. Um, but you'll see that I've got the pen sketch above the layer that I'm drawing on currently. And that helps it stay on top the entire time. That way I'm not burying my lines. Later, if I'm doing a more refined piece, then I will want to cover up some of these lines because obviously line work isn't necessarily realistic at all. So you don't really, you don't want to see all of it. But at an, in the early stages, it's important to have so that you can build the areas and the edges the way that you think that they need to be. And don't mind me, I'm just zipping really quickly back and forth between brush and eraser. Um, because I know the programs really, really well, I already know which tools I'm going to want to use for how to cut this area out and do these things. It's just all stuff that kind of comes with practice. Just like using markers and airbrush, eventually you get to a comfy spot where you can just kind of do things quickly. To me, I found that the hardest part about learning to work digitally was getting used to the programs and the layout of the tools. Mm -hmm. um, but they're there are a lot of ways to speed things up. Actually, what I'm doing right now is a great example of what would seem very strange and arbitrary. Like, why would you color this entire area in when you know you want you only want some of this? Well, that's what the erasing and the masks are really for, is to kind of give you that back and forth space that you know that you want, um, and it's not possible with some traditional tools. You can physically mask them, um, but that's time consuming and time time is money. You know, if we're mm -hmm. out of the shop trying to come up with a concept for uh, or, an, or a bunch of concepts, you know, I'm much more happy to draw on paper and then render this way because it's way faster, way more efficient. I like the organic look of drawing with pen. Obviously, you can see all the mistakes and everything that I made, and I'll clean a lot of that stuff up later as I go or something like that. But I kind of like the look. It, um, it kind of bridges the gap a little bit between uh, traditional and digital. So you, you can see that I'm using the mask layer to relieve the little grill insert that I have here. I could have just painted really carefully around it. To me, that's slower. Um, it mean, you're, you're not using the tools to its strength if you're, if you're physically going slow around everything. So I could just color really carefully around everything. But same with markers. If you do that too much, you just end up with these streaky areas that are blotchy and unclean. This is way faster. Bam, we're already done with that. We can move on. So go ahead and apply that again. Save. It's good habit always to be in to save often. Um, 
some of the programs will auto save for you but you know what you never want to rely on that <laughs> it's better just to be safe so and same thing we'll do a quick pass here and uh, I'll just use an eraser for this since it's a pretty deliberate area so this stuff is pretty mindless at this stage you know I'm just blocking out sorry it's my phone just blocking out some of the cutouts um, but again this is really for the sake of starting with contrast now I don't normally do this in this way on paper but the other kind of challenge to this particular illustration that I'm working on is the main body color actually want to be white or silver and that is already difficult on its own because it's a color that doesn't it's a light light value which means your read on it basically comes from contrast so you need everything else around it to be dark in order for it to start to make sense in its own shape Alright, so just kind of jazzing through and cutting out some of these areas here and we're good there and I'm going to do something kind of quick loose and conceptual anyways uh, just to kind of keep this moving forward and fairly quick so let's see we get a nice big marker here we're up on another layer and then, like I said I essentially need a lot of contrast in order to make this work um, so I make brushes either from scratch or modify something so that I've got because I do want some of this streaky look I do want these varied values because they are part of what makes things interesting I'll bring down the opacity on that a little bit so I can see my line work a little bit cleaner uh, and from there we'll just start cutting in a mask this is the least interesting part of the entire process but kind of mixing some of this work in the very beginning save some work in the later stages um, yeah <laughs> So realize it seems a little bit boring to be like, you're just coloring in blocks. I am. It's true. Uh, it's necessary, though. But it's so cool because you're actually using the computer, and instead of having to figure out which color uh, marker you want to use or anything like that, you can just like, oh, let's try this color. Oh, that looks crappy. Well, I'll just change it into a different color. It's a good point. And, yeah, uh, some of the building blocks of doing this allow for more of that change to happen um, you don't really need to build yourself room for error in this format because it's all built in for you but if you can do some of this sort of uh, boring work a little bit up front then you save yourself the time later of trying to figure out how uh, you know how to cut out certain things or make these lines or edges look a little better because blah 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 blah, blah. it's just simple simpler to do some of this light BS up front faster but but yeah once we kind of have a nice blank canvas on the vehicle itself then it's like well let's let's play with some color ideas let's play with some values let's play with some tones these these tools serve to do the best version of all those things and I think there's a lot of misleading feeling that uh, using working in this format does a lot of the work for you or is a shortcut it's really not if anything, it takes longer to do this way because you have so many more tools and you have so many more possibilities and and you can work in incredibly high definition, like to the point of being unnecessary and unusable. So there are aspects of it that can be considered faster or better, and that's great. You should use those strengths, uh, you know, not work against them. Uh, but yeah, the programs are just a set of tools so I'm using um, a Wacom Intuos Pro for example so I'm using a pen a literal pen and I'm drawing straight onto this thing so I'm still doing it by hand I've just traded the markers and the airbrush for this set of tools essentially to make my life easier there's a lot of the uh, automotive design and the conceptual side that does not warrant the need for original artwork and sometimes that bums me out because I like the process of finishing stuff on paper uh, but also you end up putting too much effort into something that's not necessary or doesn't end up getting used or needed then it makes a lot more sense to use the tools that are best suited for the job if I get a really cool concept while I'm out of the shop then I can come home and do a really nice final if the builder needs it 
they don't often. Uh, you know, so, you know, it's good to use tools for what they're intended. This, I like that if I take my laptop and, uh, and tablet with me, it saves me from having to bring a whole heap of other stuff. Mm -hmm. It travels a lot lighter. Security rarely asks questions about uh, a laptop. <laughs> Just he is. So, so again, I'm just kind of using my um, my initial sketch work as the the grid lines essentially for how I'm creating all the cutouts and the areas. You know, leaving me more with the body areas. I can come back in to do the wheels later. So again, and all this is underneath of the pen sketch, so that I can still see the pen sketch. And obviously, due to the program, you know, people that know these programs really well know that you know we can. We can turn down the pen sketch pretty far, and we'll get to that point where we don't need it as high contrast as it is right now. But for the sake of now, it's good to be able to see it so that we can commit the, the line designs to it a lot easier. Let me just finish up a couple of edges here, and we'll actually be able to jump into some of the values and toning. For the quicker stuff, which is really more what I intend to demo here, I don't want to get crazy, crazy involved, but... Um, um, you know, I'm just looking to show some shape and some color and some design as quickly as possible. <laughs> and because I'm talking, I'm actually going just a little bit slower. But there's a lot, there's a lot of information to try to process and share. Is there any uh, comments or questions coming through? No. Okay. Uh, is there any viewers at all? <laughs> Wait, we got nine people. All right, there's people there. Just, Yay! All right. If you guys have any questions, I'm here. I'm happy to say stuff. The only reason I'm blah blah blahing is so that it's not boring and quiet. Because that makes for an awful video later. I'm gonna go back and to edit something that's a, a reduced size version and just listen to silence is pretty darn painful. So I've got the background, I uh, usually refer to these as the background blocks or blacks just because this is the higher contrast area. I normally would use this as the capture for the airbrushing but we're skipping a few steps because the tools allow us to do so. A lot of how I work digitally is reflective of how I work traditionally but we want to use the tools for what they're capable of. So that's where I want it. I'll go ahead and lock that down, save. And now when I do, let's say I'm going to grab some bright red or something. Now when I grab some red and I come under the black blocks, I don't have to worry about cutting each and every section out. I can just fill them in. Um, so it just so happens that my plan for the front bumper was red. Uh, so already by doing the black blocks, I don't have to cut out nearly as much of the red as I was going to have to. And also guys, like it doesn't have to be questions pertaining to what Chris is doing or any artwork. Like it can be random questions. <laughs> yeah, um, that is true. Like, like you were saying, we just want to fill in the space. So if like you want to have any questions about us or doggies or like, <laughs> do you just want to vent about something, that's totally cool with us too. Yeah. And uh, we'd be happy to... To talk about it with you. you yep. Know, we don't have, pressure. Yeah, we don't have to talk about our artwork or what I'm doing. The artwork can be the background to what we're doing. It's all good. Mm -hmm. We just like to keep the conversation going. That's all. That, that's why I say I'm, the reason I'm blah, blah, blah is uh, just so that it's not super, super quiet. I loathe watching people's videos where nothing is happening. I mean, things are physically happening, but you, I don't know, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Bowser when you need him? Where is Bowser? All right. So, um, let's see. I think I also wanted to do. Here we'll scale up the brush a little bit. That's another thing about digital that's really cool because you can change the size of the brushes so quickly. You don't have to do a million little streaks in order to do one area. You can if it's a kind of a style thing that you're after, but it's not. It no longer becomes necessary. All right. I know there's a lot of decisions on this that I was like, well, I'm just going to have to make them when I get there, and that's true. Um, I've also got uh, you know, a keyboard next to me, and Intuos has uh, buttons that I pre-programmed with some of the shortcut keys for the program, or written shortcut keys just for how I work. And these are things that refer to speed of workflow. If you can move around through a program really, really quickly, man, you can really get some stuff done. Um, and actually, let's see, you know, we're, we're in an early concept stage, so it's just like, well, let's just play with some ideas. Let's see what happens if we connect the lower areas here with a little bit of that red and just kind of see what we get. 
And we can just leave it there for a little while and erase it later for like, yeah, that doesn't totally work, but that's okay. For now, we just want to have it and visualize it. One of the other really cool things about working digitally is we can kind of flip and move around the, um, the image and the artwork while we're working. And this kind of helps give you a fresh perspective on how things are looking or shaping up otherwise. Because uh, sometimes being able to pull a stroke in one direction isn't as helpful. Yeah, I forgot that I wanted to unlock that guy. Run the eraser. The roll bars. Or tube chassis, depending. I forgot that I was going to make them body color. Or not body color, red. Bumper color. Jeremy Smith Studio wants to know if you ever think about doing a wheel tutorial. Um, I could. They are certainly their own thing. So, yeah, I certainly could. Yeah, if you guys are interested in something we would consider. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I'm happy to put together tutorials on anything that people will find useful. A lot of this stuff is the same old, same old for me, uh, day in and day out. So, that's why I'm never sure what is really a good idea or not, because it's all more of the same to me. So I would rather take suggestions than anything else, because I'm not really sure uh, where everybody's at with their experience or which tools they're using. So it's better to know uh, from your guys' feedback than the other way. All right, so just basing in some reds there. Obviously, that's like solid red, super red. Nothing would naturally be that saturated, but we don't need to concern ourselves with that as the first step as far as saturation goes. Um, let's go ahead and lock that there. It doesn't go anywhere. Save. And we'll start on something slightly more interesting. Let's start to bring some body tones in here. And we'll just pick a... Uh, Manix wants to know, how did you de develop your design style? I'm a big fan from your Instagram. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Um, so I guess what I would, what I do, I would consider to be more or less piggybacked off of the people that I grew up watching and enjoying, like Chip Foose and Steve Stanford. So um, even doing more digital stuff, I still kind of feel like I want to have a bit of that really traditional feel. Um, so I know it doesn't really totally answer the question, but also I didn't go to design school or art school or anything like that, so. Anything, anything that I've done is really trial and error and trying to figure out how, how to kind of get a look that I'm after. Um, I've worked in the custom car industry for a lot, a lot of years. So a lot of my ideas kind of pull from that frame of reference, but I'm also a big like uh, sports car and supercar guy. So and being able to mix those ideas in is a lot of fun as well. Uh, but I like variety. Jordan Knoll uh, would love to see more videos about your design process and what you think makes a good design versus a bad design. That's a really interesting idea. I suppose I've always thought of a lot of that stuff as really, really subjective. Because um, I know I've watched videos of designers saying, oh, there's a, there's a formula to how this can be perfect or this, but eh, I don't know if that's totally true because there's cars that I like that I know other people don't like. There's cars that people like that I know I don't like. Like, you know, it's still personal choice overall, I think. Um, so I can certainly, I can certainly give my take on it, but wouldn't be right, wrong, or indifferent. Just be one person's opinion. But that would be fun. It'd be cool to kind of pick a car, maybe a new car to redesign. I've seen some YouTubers do that, and I think that's kind of a fun idea. Um, minus, I certainly don't want to insult the designers that do work on these new cars. I know it's not an easy job to have these days. Nope. A lot of, a lot of things to try to accomplish in a single vehicle design. It's very easy for us to be like, I would have done this differently, I would have done that differently. Yeah, yeah, that's that's easy. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and, and if Ferrari cared, Ferrari would hire you. That's what I think. <laughs> so. Or like any of these other car companies, all their new designs that are coming out, like some of them, they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. Now the ones, it's just like, why did they put that sheep there? <laughs> Why? I, I don't understand. Yeah, cars have changed purpose a lot in the last 10 years or so. So, you know, <laughs> the way people use them and what they're for is just this totally, totally different thing. But that would be fun to kind of go about that process. I'm going to 
bring the opacityist down a little bit to start to detensify the uh, the pen sketch because as I move along I don't need to see nearly as much of it as the guide and at a certain point it becomes a hindrance as well. Uh, let's flip this guy around and uh, like, like I mentioned earlier light value uh, paint jobs are particularly difficult. I'm going to try to make this interesting without being boring. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Uh, creative guy says hi. Hi there. Had uh, something catch in my throat. I apologize. <laughs> it's all good. I'm just glad you're okay. Totally die. I died. <laughs> so a lot of this I'm doing is much in the same way as I would do markers. If I was sitting down to do a much more refined. Uh, rendering, I would start in a slightly different format, and um, I thought about doing that in today's demo, but I was like, nah, too much all at once. Let's let's uh, let's walk a little bit before we run, uh, because a lot of the really dark, high contrast stuff that I post is finished digitally as well, but the lighting technique and formula is completely reversed, which is cool. I like it a lot more, and it helps me think about light in a totally different way. But if I was to instruct somebody on it, uh, you got to understand the basics first um, to be able to make inverted decisions like that, which is a weird thing to say, but it is a thing. And stuff. Oh no. Yeah, and notice that uh, I haven't like used any digital airbrushes or anything like that. Um, yeah, I am having a, <laughs> a little bit of a, what's up? Uh, Creative Goddess said, uh, YouTube has been really bad about giving notifications. I'm subscribed and have the notifications on your channel, but no email notifications. Huh, that is weird. And a bit of a bummer. And I know there's been spots where, you know, we fell out of, out of care or time to do more youtube -y stuff, or we were doing more uh, live videos on uh, Facebook and Instagram for a couple of years. And same type of thing, like, People not getting notified means that they're not going to be able to watch it. If we don't have, a, you know, we don't need a million viewers to feel good or anything like that. But if, if not enough people are going to see it, then it's not worth continuing to do. Um, so you can see why creators drop out of interest a little bit to do stuff like this. Because, you know, if you're not, if there aren't enough people interacting, uh, then it's not really, <laughs> not media, yeah. yeah, it's not worth the time to do. And, um. You know, this isn't, especially, let's say, um, YouTube, for example, is not something I get paid to do at all. Uh, so this is us eating up some of our work and free time to to try to bring some of these demos together. It's not always the best use of time. Um, but I always get questions about stuff and I want to do demos, but it is always a bummer to hear that people aren't seeing or getting notifications. Then... Mm. <laughs> As Katie said, social media is a lot the same way. Hit that like button down below. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe. That's what she said. <laughs> nice. So one thing I'll do from this stage to kind of spruce things up and, and uh, keep things moving forward, um, it's nice in the digital format that you're not stuck to any rules about which order to do things. You can jump a few steps ahead and have some fun. So, for example, I am going to break out the airbrush. And, uh, and do this glass real quick just so my brain will stop looking at it and thinking something should be there. Because uh, we're going to end up with a lot of hollow spots here pretty soon because the values are coming around or otherwise. Obviously the, the darkest stuff that's happening right now is still my pen outline. And it's a really, really heavy pen outline. So it sort of makes sense. So we'll just kind of trick this glass in here real quick. Just so that's not boring. I haven't done the interior yet, obviously, but... Um, <laughs> sorry, i to rotate my exactly. brush here. I have um, a type of Wacom pen that I have allows me to rotate the pen so that I can... Uh, so it's a little bit more like an actual marker, and I'm still getting used to it, which means I'm making errors, but that's okay. That's another just really great feature of these types of tools, you know. You don't have to get things on the first try, which is cool. It still looks really cool. Does it look okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, the, uh, a lot of artwork to me looks pretty terrible for a long time. 
and then it starts to sharpen up. It's kind of the one thing that I'll give digital a little bit more credit for because you can jump around. Um, you can kind of satisfy your curiosity a lot more in these other areas where you kind of go, I just wish I could make this area a little bit better at this stage. Um, whereas if you do that like with acrylic or oil painting or, or other mediums, you're sabotaging yourself because you're jumping too many steps ahead too quickly. Um, and that won't actually help you in the long run. Alright, let's see. Yeah. Now we'll just blast a little bit in there. A creative goddess wants you to put your beautiful drawings together in a calendar. That'd be interesting. Make a full on calendar. So many calendars. Yeah, that's a How really interesting idea. That? Yeah. Do a lot, a lot of drawings. Mm -hmm. This is true. So many drawings. Go ahead and I'm always try to make sure that I label layers, lock them, and stuff like that. Um, you know, because once you end up, once you can get pretty, pretty intense and carried away here, get, get 50 or 100 layers in, and you're like, man, which one is it? And I'll start color coding and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> so it's good to label them as you go so that you have this nice, pretty roadmap. I'm going to pick a nice high contrast gray here to create this little shadow under here. And again, this is all stuff that I would do as paper and pencil anyways, it's just because I have this set of tools, I have the ability to kind of jump around a little bit. And tell you what, we'll just even start covering up some of the pen line with a little bit of opaque color here. Um, because the pen sketch is so loose, I know that I'm gonna have to cover a lot of it if I was gonna do like a clean final render. I would just do redo all the line work anyways and just make single pass lines, which on its own is probably a good video to do. Um, so right now what I'm doing essentially is I'm selecting colors from the tonal range I've already made and painting over all the lines and stuff. <laughs> And it's just slightly cleaner than, you know, all this kick up here. Some of this stuff looks interesting, but, you know, so select the color that's right here and just kind of paint through. Whoops. Whoops. Come on, select the color. Work better. And obviously, you won't be able to get everything out this way, but with a, a bit of back and forth, you can get cleaned up really good. Now, you could use, like, more of a digital airbrush look and get all this stuff, like, super soft and stuff. But uh, I think this really, really soft digital renders look too digital, uh, and, and I don't really like that. I like something that looks clean, but at a certain point, it's cool and it looks like it's done by a person, no matter what the tools are, so. Uh, Maddox wants to know, do you have any tips on how to get any custom card design jobs? Well, that's a good question. Um, well, the best thing you can do is be doing them, let's say on like social media, and kind of putting them out there. Uh, the more that you can do and show people, the more people will know that they can ask you to do those things. So, you know, people's mind readers, they don't know what you can do until you show them. So put your best foot forward, come up with random concepts and art to do just for the sake of doing and have fun. Um, but put your best foot forward, for sure. Put yourself out there. This is, you know, I've seen some guys will like tag builders or uh, manufacturers in, um, in posts, and that's something you can do. I don't really do stuff like that because uh, I think it can be a little bit annoying to the, um, to the builders or, or whatever. But, but yeah, the best thing you can do is be already doing the thing that you want people to know you for. What's it? Uh, Joe Rogan says, be the superhero in your own movie. What would you want people to see you do? Um, I guess I've known people in the past that would wait for an opportunity to do something, and I think that's a little bit silly. You know, if you already know you want to do it, just go for it. And, um, and a lot of the builders that I work with uh, work with more than one artist anyways. Uh, because there are some people that are going to be stronger at some things and others. There is plenty of stuff that I do not want to do. Not because I don't like the car or otherwise, but, you know, if I'm doing uh, rendering design stuff for a shop, they might be like, hey, can you do this logo or can you do this t-shirt design as well? And that is so not my jam. It's just not a good use of my time. So, but the opposite end of that spectrum is there's people that love to do that type of stuff that don't want anything to do with renderings. 
So, uh, you know, just do stuff <laughs> is the uh, short answer. Don't be afraid of putting yourself out there. That's kind of the, one of the greatest things about social media is that you can do anything. And uh, eventually people will find you. There is some level of consistency that you need in order for people to um, recognize your artwork and your style and stuff like that. And honestly, especially in something like social media, you can always message shops. If you already have a great catalog of work, just find some people and say, hey, do you need any help with anything? Worst they can say is no. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. What layer am I on here? Got to keep my layers in order. Just kind of airbrush fogging in this back area here because I know I'm going to cut it out pretty seriously. Everything going okay over there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I'm good. So these tools, it's kind of a, a lot of back and forth. There's times when you can be way more precise, and there's times where it's well, faster and more efficient to just <laughs> just get started, you know? Um, because these tools really allow a lot of room for forgiveness, there's almost no excuse not to use them or learn to use them. As I say, we are in 2020. Um, I love working traditional paper, markers, airbrush, pencils, and stuff. But there is also an impending sense of who knows how much longer those things are going to be around. So it's just as important to be well versed in these other mediums. And it might not seem like it, but I've been doing digital work for years, many, many years. Um, and I've always incorporated a bit of it into what I do. Um, it just, um, I tend to try to make my digital stuff look like my traditional stuff, unless I'm really doing something out of the box. Uh, but otherwise, I prefer to have the same look all the way across so that I'm not leaning on one set of tools to do something that I'm not physically capable of. Uh, let me add another layer before we get in there. Uh, Creative Goddess wants to know, uh, wait, never mind, she said you answered the question. No, I can't. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have variety. Like, I you enjoy sure. doing paint and marker stuff. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. It, it just depends on what, what's needed of you. Yep, that's true, and that's another really great thing that builders that I work with like, um, and even companies that, like, larger companies that I work for, is that I'm not stuck in one medium. I can do whatever is needed based on time frame or end result. So, as I say a lot, uh, most shops that I work with don't necessarily care so much about what the end version is so long as it's on time and it does the job that it needs. Mm -hmm. um, which is where these sets of tools are just ultimately so much more efficient. Not to mention, I could take this to a coffee shop and keep on working on it. <laughs> um, here. So I'm going to start getting uh, slightly higher contrast in here. As things are starting to become a little bit more balanced, as I would with paper, you just kind of go, all right, so now we need to get this a little bit darker, we need this to get a little bit darker, and that's okay. We'll just keep doing it until we get it. Until we get it. Yeah. Stretching, sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all good. No, actually, I'm going to do it the other way around. Thank goodness for the undo button today. That's what it's there for. Yep. Yep, I guess I didn't change that layer. Okay, yep, exactly what it's there for. <laughs> for all the silly little mistakes I'm making because I'm trying to talk and work at the same time. Uh, Creative Goddess says, I've been trying to get back to analog pencils and pens, etc. Nice. since being on a computer for my career. Yeah, it's, it's interesting going back and forth or going from one direction over to the other. Um, and I think, I think a lot of artists enjoy that process. To me, I think... The things that I learned from one, because I go back and forth every day, uh, the things that I learned from one help me be better at the other in some way. So, you know, being able to draw freehand and pen really helps with the tablet drawing experience. Um, but I, and I like the nuances of each. There's good things and aggravating things about both. 
for sure. Uh, but the variety kind of kind of keeps things fun. I find that if I'm struggling to do a certain type of job in one format, all I gotta do is switch out the tools that I'm using. You know, if a marker rendering just isn't coming together, I'll just uh, switch over to digital and just let the process take shape in a different way. Just because sometimes your mind just kind of gets stuck in in a version of a process or a set of rules or whatever, and those are all synthetic things. <laughs> They're not real. All right, so let's see. And I'm just going to go through some of this stuff a little bit quick because I want to make sure that what I'm doing is conceptual and not, uh, and not wasting time picking down details that I'm like, I'm not sure yet because um, it defeats the purpose of what we're trying to achieve here. If we spend all day on it, then it's not really efficient concept artwork. We're just working. Uh, which is not what we're after here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's just kind of toggle on and off the differences. You can start to see that as the values um, get a little bit more high contrast and we start to paint over some of the pen lines that things, I don't want to say look more realistic necessarily, but it starts to soften the look of the entire thing. Oh, sorry. Telephone. Oh, sorry. And uh, so I'm at this stage, I'm going to grab, whoops, push. And I'll start putting a little bit of shape into these bars here because this solid bright red is <laughs> certainly not realistic. Uh, the computer is great giving instant gratification, but holding a pencil keeps your skills sharp. That's true. If you're using a drawing tablet, though, it's the same skills. Yeah. Or at least that's how I see it. And in a lot of ways, I find the tablet to be a lot harder. Um, mostly because I would prefer to be drawing with a pen. And there's a lot of similarities to them. It uh, does wig me out a little bit when I do see artists doing digital artwork with, like, a mouse. I'm like, man, that seems labor-intensive. But some people just prefer to work that way. And they're crazy. All right. So... Let's see, I'll flip this guy around, and maybe where we've got a little bit of space for red, let me lock some of these layers real quick. Um, we'll do a quick interior pass or something like that. There we go. Just a little bit of red in there. We don't want much. <laughs> and yeah, obviously, say I was airbrushing, as it is technically considered. So it'll all be overspray, more or less. But because we're going to come back in and cut all this out individually, it's just one way to map out the process. It don't matter. It's insignificant. If you're doing it on paper, you'd be masking first. This is the only difference here is we're masking afterwards. So in graffiti, we call this line cutting, where you come back in and Actually, you would make the pass with another color, whatever color it's around, but uh, similar similar outcome. <laughs> you do color the big blocks first, and then cut out everything afterwards. Yep. Yeah, and I tend to try to be like really deliberate with lines and try to make everything in single passes because it looks better, it looks cleaner, and it's faster. So if I don't get a line on the first try, that's where you might see me hitting undo a few times. I'm like, no, got to get it on the first try. Because mm -hmm. um, it looks weird and janky if you have like a hundred attempts at a line. <laughs> so just kind of cutting out the window there so that we have a, a, a real pass through. Because obviously if we left the solid red or solid gray, then we don't have a good sense of the windows being transparent. All right, let's see, we'll cut these guys out. And at this point, I've, I've literally turned the uh, pen pressure off so that I can erase a lot more quickly. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not, but, you know, here it's not, so turn it off. Oof. All right, so we got a little bit of red in there. That's cool, that's cool. I dig it. At least. I like it. Give us a little bit more personality in that area. And 
One of the other things I'll start to do, let's see, I'll go ahead and label this interior. It's going to be very lightly detailed. Ah, it's got a typo there. Um, is, let's see. We'll start to take some. Because I've, right. <laughs> I've got a solid white background here. I kind of want to fade in a little bit of white towards the outside edges. And this gives me a lot more focus towards the center. Technically, it's realistic, but it's mm, slightly more aggressive than realism would be. Because um, we want to kind of keep the details and the focus in this area here, and the overall flow, of course, as well. But these really heavy outlines towards the outside edge, these are going to be the things that drop our feel of realism, especially that they're blue. Um, and I can change the color of the lines. Actually, at this stage, I might just go ahead and do that anyways. Um, I'll just kind of toggle this off and on so you can see we kind of get a, a nice glow effect around everything. I don't always do it, but especially if I'm doing something conceptual, it's not... Um, I hear my doggy in the background. It's not totally necessary to kind of keep sticking to these perfect rules about lighting and perspective. I'm going to bend the rules a little bit because we're after a look, and uh, but we're having some fun at the same time. You know? We don't need to be stuck to anything. Um, let's save that guy. All right, so since I'm here, let's see what happens if we black and white, clipping layer, auto. And let's see where our blue is. We can soften this up just a teensy tiny little bit. Well, it's actually not bad. Um, and we kind of toggle that off and on so we can see. We kind of go from the, the blue sketch. It is um, slightly more transparent now. And then taking all the saturation out of it. And now we, that we've removed that element, we kind of get a different feel, which is kind of cool. Uh, again, that's just kind of the joy of this format, is we can do anything. It's just a matter of knowing where the tools are and, and how to use them and place them. And again, because the um, because the vehicle is a light value, I'm going to do some slightly higher contrast stuff here in the bottom as well. I don't want to get too carried away, but I don't want there to be nothing either. And I'll just kind of pick colors within what I'm doing because I don't necessarily want to use the airbrush all the time. I will to soften things up just like I will um, in a traditional rendering, but using an airbrush all the time digitally looks very digital. Mm -hmm. It looks like futuristic artwork from 20 years ago. Yay. Exactly. Uh, but your style might call for that, so you know, don't take my method of anything as any rule or any reason to do anything at all. This is my preference is all. Please. I'm just going to get a little bit more value down here towards the bottom just so that the shape of this bound, uh, bounding box is a little bit more obvious. And still. But we're jamming along, and I'm going to pick up a couple of details to pick out just as a way to kind of round this out, and then we can uh, we can finish up this demo here. And just going to soften some of this stuff up here. And notice I'm not using any photo adjusting tools to soften anything. You could use blur tools and stuff like that, but I like to continually add and subtract with color. Um, feels a little bit more in my control. You know, if I get something to a point of finality, I can certainly come in and, and use some of these. There's a million tools here that I'm never going to use, but you know, start to soften and push things a little bit more, which you certainly can do. So, let's see. One of the other things that we can do that actually will be fun and interesting as a demo is let's see. We'll get back to the pen sketch here, and let's grab the outlines for the wheel. And that wheel, all right, all right. And control C, control V, and let's see. Move those in their own layer. Turn this stuff back on. Actually, we can turn that. This doesn't need to be a clipping layer. 
And let's see. Image adjust. Invert. Oh. And come on, screen. And guys, if you're confused at all with any of these uh, controls <laughs> that he's doing or trying, having a hard time following along, uh, I do recommend doing like just a, a little tutorial on your own. Um, just doing basic -y stuff. Just just see where the programs are, see what does what, you know. Yeah. And just take your time with it. There's a lot of functionality in these programs, which is awesome. Um, but you can get lost in them very quickly, too. And they can become very, very confusing. Uh, let's see, we'll just group those and we'll just lighten them up. So I've essentially copy pasted my wheel sketch, the blue pen sketch, inverted it overlaid it so now I have kind of these fun light white details to kind of fill up that void of blackness that just had nothing going on and um, and I can basically piggyback the details off of that and that probably seemed like a complex thing to do <laughs> uh, but worth it because now I don't have to reline any of those things they're there I already did the work good times all right Flip this guy sideways, see how we're looking. So one of the ideas I had was this side stripe here, and I already know that I'm not going to use it. So I'll go ahead and mask the sketch area, and I'll make sure I've got a decent mark our thing here, and just get rid of it. I prefer to have more lines than less uh, starting out. Um, because we can come back in and eliminate all these things and because it's a layer mask I can actually come back in and add them too if I really needed uh, to go back and forth with them so even the undo button technically isn't permanent depending on the format that you're using to uh, to quote unquote undo stuff and while I'm here I'll clean up some of these lines here you know a lot of what's in this sketch is considered like exploratory lines and that's just the nature of drawing um, but because I've got a little more progress on this thing I'm starting the values of starting to create more of the shape than the lines I can start subtracting a lot of the stuff that I consider just noise now I don't like to get rid of everything because I like some of the noise I like it still to look like a person drew this because um, you cross the threshold at a certain point where it's so clean that it's not too clean but not as entertaining to look at, especially as a concept, because I'm not going to finish this to this 100% completion level. I'm going to get it to a decent point, do some details, feel good about it, and move on. All right, so you know, even just doing some of those cleanups just really helped. I'll you know, pull the interior overlap lines out. I can re-edge some of these uh, door edge seams more cleanly um, with single pass lines. Right, right. Right, got it, totally. Exactly. All right, so I'll grab another layer here, and I'll start to do some of these high-contrast details so we can get wrapped up. Okay, fine. I have no idea how long we've been going. Almost an hour. Okay, we're doing good. Um, so this is certainly, you know, some of the more high-contrast stuff is where things are going to get more interesting, and more of the details start to make sense a little bit faster. But this is kind of the nature of the thing, too. It would be the same in a, in a traditional piece. You know, all the really cool stuff happens towards the end. And all these lines and dots and streaks and decisions I'm making are just how I would with marker. I'm just using a different tool to plot all the things. And because it's faster, I can change my mind as much as I want. It looks so angry now. It looks so angry. It's got a frowny face. <laughs> you get a stormy cloud. <laughs> yeah, just because I've sketched something a certain way doesn't mean I can't change my mind about what I think it should do or what I think it should mean. Um, you know, I'm here so I can make the changes that I want to see. And just kind of play with them a little bit. That's... That's the whole purpose. The idea that you're walking into something with a perfect idea of how to execute it, yeah, maybe sometimes, but all the time, mm, yeah. Leave yourself some room to play and explore. 
you know, certainly somebody, some people will have expectations of what, uh, what an end result is from you, so you don't want to go wandering and exploring too much. But yeah, I definitely like that idea of the cutout a little bit better. Just breathes a little bit more. Another thing to be cautious of is using solid black and solid white. I don't mind using solid white for highlights because it's high contrast, but solid white and solid black look very unnatural. So you gotta be careful with that. Well, what if that's like how they do their artwork still? It's, there is a style element to that for sure. Um, and that reads correctly for some people and incorrectly for others as far as uh, style. If people do it accidentally, then it feels accidental. But if it's if it's done in a deliberate looking way, it feels deliberate, it looks organic, it looks good. Let's see, I'm a little heavy on the back block here. This is just a little too low, so we'll come up and bring this guy up. Just gonna start to fix some of these little holiday areas. And we've actually got a really, really good look going on here. I like it. Some of the some of the heavy edges I could actually do in a solid gray that would be cleaner than the pen that it is, and it would really be able to tell the story a whole lot better. Um, but as a base concept, you know, if I was out of shop and we're an hour in-ish, um, I'd feel really, really good about this. I'd probably be moving a little bit faster because I'd be sitting next to a nice warm coffee. Uh, that always motivates me. but. So does just being out at somebody's shop too. I like being on location doing things. It kind of keeps keeps things moving, keeps things exciting. So I'm just gonna plot in some of these details here because I'm actually gonna add some color into the lights. Um, and then maybe we'll do a little bit of surface color as well. For where I'm at, I do wanna do just a teensy tiny little bit of brown shadow here, but I don't want it to be solid black. Again, like I said, I just want to, well, that is becoming solid black. <laughs> what color we got? Yeah, we want to lighten for sure. Um, because how you, how you choose values also dictates where people's eyes will go in your drawing. And that's true of artwork and true of concept artwork. Um, you know, they kind of read a little bit differently. So where you place these harsh black outlines and harsh bright white highlights will be part of the storytelling element. You know, what people are focused on is what you tell them to be focused on. That's uh, already starting to feel a little bit more planted with that nice little gray shadow on the bottom. It's already starting to feel more natural, um, at least to me, which is cool. Uh, yeah, I might actually be able to do something with this. Who knows? All right, let's see. I'm actually just going to go ahead and merge that down to keep things simple. Um, and I like to just toggle the layers to see. There's just a huge amount of impact with the details that are on that layer. It just becomes contrast, clean lines. Um, it looks cool. I dig it. And let's see from here what I would want to do if I was like just trying to wrap up a version of this. Another thing that I know for sure, in my mind, the way that I had this concept sort of laid out was with some type of colored amber lights. And uh, I can do these in a lot of different ways. Why? There we go. Nope. Got that layer. Let's see, I gotta make sure I get the saturation right here. because when I originally drew this concept for the uh, wider light gray body with the red bumperettes, it's more of a um, more of a early Porsche Carrera type of design. I always have these amber driving lights low on the front. do to try to balance things a little bit like I was at somebody's office and I had another few minutes to work and probably uh, let's see uh, we want some light value some airbrush I don't know if it looks like I'm picking through brushes and er erasers really really quickly or if it's slow motion on your end 
I feel like I'm going past. Uh, I think it's keeping up pretty well. Nice. So, let's see. Um, this stuff is noticeably easier to demo as well. This is the first time we've ever done like a screen record like this. And it's uh, a lot more trouble free, I'll say. Less setup, and we get to see a lot more progress a lot more quickly. But that's just kind of the beauty of the tools. It also depends on what you're doing. You know, there's plenty of versions of basic drawings that can be accomplished really, really quickly. But even just the nature of explaining pieces and parts of the process and the tools and something is enough to slow things down just a little bit. But that's all right. And this, um, it's kind of this tire highlight is a good opportunity to correct the shape of the tire. You know, my initial sketch, I might have had it one way, but that doesn't necessarily make it right. You know, this is the time to make sure that the positioning of these types of details are correct. Do, 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 do. And we'll just kind of soften the bottom of that a little bit. Just to give the tire a little bit of roll in there. Just feels a little bit more natural, a little bit more soft. Tires aren't really a hard shaped object. Not really. Not really. No, so I'm gonna be careful not to over aggressive them and stuff. Yeah, I like a slightly softer look towards the lower version anyways. Let's take a little airbrush and try to smooth out some of these sections real, real quick. All right, what else, what else? We still have some harsh outlines, but that's not really too concerning for this type of concept. Um, I will end up doing a ton of detail on this after we get uh, wrapped up in this video, but for now, I'm just gonna plot in some really, really quick highlights and get us wrapped up and then I'll just maybe I'll spend some time this evening working on it if I've got a little time then I can post the final version tomorrow so let's take a little bit of bright white here come across some of these top surfaces this is a really interesting wheel design that will not go quick so because um, there's a lot of roughness in my sketch so it will take a lot of work to to smooth those out and that's definitely not well, that would be painful to watch in a demo, I think. Watch me fix all my mistakes. And stuff. Yep. All right, now the right size. There we go. I still try to make these lines as quick and gestural as possible so that they have a nice quick flow. Like I said earlier, I don't want to do a lot of pickups and see line seams and stuff like that. So just try to be careful and deliberate. And let's see, I actually need some color balance just from the ground in these lower areas here. And let's see. One other little detail to kind of keep things looking a little bit more natural, even though my edges here are really, really heavy because of the way I did the pen sketch. But I can highlight them a little bit better. They'll start to look a little bit cleaner, at least for the stage of drawing that we're going for here. Yeah, so there's always a, a little bit of highlight on door edges and seams, and it's part of what makes them look natural. Um, if you skip that part, things tend to look a little flat and a little hot wheelsy. Halfway up in the way. Yeah, right. Let's highlight some of this trim real quick. Something kind of quick and not fancy. And then the other thing I do want to do before we get totally, totally wrapped up here. This actually looks pretty good for a quick concept. 
um, is one of the ways, there's a few dynamics that I would want to play with a little bit more, you know, if I was approved on a design and I knew I had the time, um, there's a few things I would do for sure, and I'll explain them here after I check in this mirror I forgot about. And you might be like, wait, the mirror's on the wrong side of the vehicle, and so is the steering wheel. Well, this is the view that I drew the car from. I'm just kind of going back and forth from side to side, so that when I'm doing these long strokes, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm naturally going to go from left to right. So one of the nice ways to kind of make sure that those lines look really, really clean is to change views, um, switch it from side to side, rotate it 90 degrees, so that the lines you're making, you're always pulling in a natural direction for you, um, but just moving the artwork around. It's easy peasy. But now that I'm in the correct perspective that I drew this in, the mirror's on the correct side, the steering wheel's on the correct side. There's about a million things in here to clean up, but I can, at least at this stage, like even for me, I, s I see the potential in what this could be as a really unusual uh, Chevy truck build. This would be unlike anything that anyone's asked me to do previously, which is cool. That's the idea, is to come up with these ideas that are just outside the box. So one of the other things about color dynamics, and even though there's very little color happening in this particular rendering, is uh, it's color balance, these uh, lower areas. So the ground being this value will actually kick a little bit of white up in these lower colors here. It won't show up really here because it's already, it's already so bright. Um, but we can plot in just a little bit here. And we'll just erase all that there over spray. And um, again, another nice thing about working digitally is you can just kind of go, ah, got a little too much. We'll dial it back a little bit. And that's all right. So just kind of cleaning the edges up a little bit here, and let's see what I want to do. So actually we'll go ahead and put a mask on that, and we'll pull down from the top. Ah, got to switch over to the right brush. Everything all right over there, kitty cat? Yep. <laughs> um, Jeremy Smith Studios says, I've always wondered why digital artists flip the image like that. Genius. Ah. Yeah, it's a really cool thing. You can also do that if you're like on paper, if you're rendering on vellum or marker paper. Um, you can work both sides, and it kind of gives you the ability to do the same thing. It also gives you a fresh, fresh perspective on what you're working on so that you're not constantly seeing it in the same way because you can start to really get married to your mistakes if you never change your perspective. Um, so yeah, it's a really um, great way to see more and be able to draw lines in a way that are more natural to you. I think that was one thing that I struggled with years ago when I was trying to pick this up is how do I know that I'm always going to be able to put lines in the exact way? Well, one is to zoom in or out depending on the line that you're doing, and two is to switch around the view so that, um, so that you can make the line more naturally. Of course, the tools allow you to do um, undo, 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 undo as many times as you want. But eventually, in, in workflow experience, that will get aggravating. So you're like, how do I just be better? And that's one way. All right, so let's see. We want to we need to bring some of that reflection out, down. Yeah, brush. There we go. My foot fell asleep. No! Yeah, only it hurts. <laughs> Why? 4K! Um, what I would say is a general baseline, this is a really, really great spot actually to stop. If I was at a shop and this was an idea I came up with while I was there, I would feel so happy about getting to this stage and then knowing that I was going to come home to do... Um, I would say a cleaner version, but I could literally take this and spend probably another three, four hours really, really polishing this up. And I might do that tonight to post tomorrow because I actually really like this concept. I think it looks really, really cool. I think I could probably do more of a, a white pearl type of paint job on the top surfaces so that it's not too dull. Um, and darken up some of these reds in areas where I think they need a little bit more contrast, do some of the color balance from the background block here. But those are all 
very fancy words. So, very fancy. Yeah. For now, I'll just uh, I'll call this one done. So, thank you guys so much for joining us on this journey. Hope you had fun and learned something. Um, yeah, at some point, maybe we'll, we'll do a tutorial where we take one of these all the way from beginning to end. This is not not like that. This is just like a kind of an early concept version. You know, it's not totally totally to the end. It's not the middle. It's somewhere in in no man's land. But it would be really cool to do more of these in this format. This actually is really really great for being able to work and talk at the same time. Um, but you know, we'll hey. see. That's <laughs> Excuse me. Time will tell if people are interested in these or not. And uh, yeah. So meanwhile, you guys have a great day. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> and have a good one.